What's going on guys? Got another comic book haul video for you. Uh, this first batch of books I picked up at a uh, local store, Great Escape, for 50 cents each. Um, got a few so I'll run through those and then I've got a couple dollar books at the end um, but most of these are 50 cent uh, finds. Uh, so this first one is Daredevil 197. This is the first appearance of Yuriko Oyama. Uh, she later becomes Lady Deathstrike, so I think she doesn't become Lady Deathstrike in this issue, obviously, but eventually she becomes Lady Deathstrike, and that's, she's a pretty prominent um, uh, Wolverine villain uh, in the later in the later runs. She's actually been in the uh, the new X Men Legends series. There's a, a storyline with her uh, and Omega Red fighting uh, Wolverine and Jubilee. So uh, I've been enjoying that pretty good. Uh, the art in it is. A little better than most modern comics, uh, so I'm enjoying that. And the covers are really cool. And they've got it's kind of a throwback to those uh, early '90s uh, Jim Lee X-Men days. So I've been enjoying that. Um, but I was happy to find this for 50 cents. This one goes for I don't know like 10 bucks or something. Uh, there's a few spine ticks on the side there, but you know for 50 cents can't beat that. Next, got Avengers 227. Oh, let's stay up. There we go. Avengers 227. This is the second appearance of Monica Rambeau as Captain Marvel. Her first was in that uh, Amazing Spider-Man annual. Uh, 15 or 16, I think it was. Um, and this was her second appearance, so she's right there on the cover. Um, obviously, this book was heating up a few months ago during the WandaVision show. It's cooled down a lot. Uh, it goes for about 20 bucks now. Um, you can see there's a little tear there on the side, but again, for 50 cents, can't beat that. Next, got another formerly hot book based on the Disney Plus show. This is um, Captain America 323. This is the first appearance of John Walker, the Super Patriot. He later becomes a U.S. agent, obviously. Uh, he was Super Patriot in this book. Um, this one, again, going for about 10, 20 bucks now. I was going for double that back when the Falcon and Winter Soldier show came out, but for 50 cents, I wasn't going to leave this one. I'm a Captain America fan. I don't have this one anyway, so I'm probably just going to keep this one um, in my personal collection unless it starts heating up again for like 50 or 60 bucks for some reason. Uh, it's got the cool Marvel 25th anniversary border on the outside, and I think that's Mike Zek art. I'm not sure. Let's get a Z over there. So I think that's Mike Zuck. Did he do the uh, pencils Paul Neary? I don't know who that is, but that kind of looks like Mike Zuck, so we'll we'll go with that uh, till now, or till I find out otherwise. Alright, next we've got uh, Sensational She-Hulk, number 39. Uh, nothing too special about this one, this run. I just try to pick them up for cheap when I can. Uh, a lot of these uh, like bondage covers or whatever go for you know 20 30 bucks bucks the one with the uh where she's jumping rope or he's asking her to jump rope that one goes for like 100 or something ridiculous now um so you can find a lot of these in the the, the cheap bins um this one was 50 cents like i said uh so i was happy to find that all right next couple books got Starlight number two, number three, and number five. So I've just been picking these up. Um, you know, it's a six issue miniseries, so um, I really enjoyed the first one. I think I've only got one more left to to find. And I found them all in either the dollar bins or like these were in the fifty cent bins. So just a cool Mark Miller story. Um, art's okay. Uh, it doesn't put me off immediately, so uh, I'll take it. Uh, so once I find the last issue, I'll read that, and uh, that'll be it. And again, I think this was optioned. Uh, I'm not sure if they're gonna do it in on Netflix. If that was part of the Miller, Mark Miller. He sold basically, I don't know, a whole bunch of his IP to Netflix, and they were doing like uh, they did Ju Jupiter's Legacy, and they did Super Crooks recently. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be part of that or if it's going to be something separate like uh, like Nemesis. And they're doing that, but he doesn't have anything to do with it. I think he was more involved with 
uh, Jupiter's Legacy and maybe Super Crips. I don't know if he's like a producer on that or I haven't watched it, so I'm not not sure. All right, next got Silver Surfer Warlock Resurrection. This is beautiful Jim Starlin cover. He did the interiors as well, and he wrote the story. So it's really really excited to find this again. This isn't this isn't worth anything. You can find these in the dollar and quarter bins all day. These uh, early 90s uh, cosmic stuff. The only ones that seem to be worth anything are the ones with uh, Thanos, like the Silver Surfer stuff and the actual Infinity Gauntlets. Uh, this one's not worth anything, but I just love this cover. Love Jim Starlin. Uh, two of my favorite cosmic characters, uh, Warlock and Surfer, there on the cover. Uh, those two and uh, Captain Marvel really. Really enjoy them. Uh, Jim Starlin basically had, well, not so much Surfer with uh, Warlock and Captain Marvel, definitely. He was uh, kind of instrumental in bringing them into the, the comics universe uh, back in the 70s. So, um, And then, of course, the Infinity Gauntlet stuff. That's when I came to, uh, I was introduced to him when I was collecting in the 90s. So this uh, holds a special place in my heart, so I was happy to find this. I think this was a a four issue mini mini series so uh this is the first time i'd find found it in the cheap bins it wasn't completely beat up so i snagged that pretty quick and then it looks like it's got the infinity watch on the cover there it's got the uh, gamora drax moon dragon and troll and those uh warlock and infinity watch books have been heating up a lot lately since they cast warlock for uh, guardians of the galaxy 3 i uh, can't wait to see him in that so very excited to find this. All right, next we've got Justice League of America number ten. I usually stay away from uh, the DC stuff, other than like the early '90s uh, Superman and Batman. Um, I just never really got into it. But this one, uh, this was a Michael Turner cover, so that, uh, that stopped me while I was digging through the uh, the fifty cent bins. So um, any time I can find a cheap Michael Turner cover that I like. He did a run on JLA and um, Superman, too, around this time. Superman and Supergirl. So, anytime I can find covers that I like, I'll pick those up. And I don't think many of those are worth anything uh, too bad. So, you can find those in the cheap bins a lot. And uh, it's just really cool. I guess that's Power Girl right there. I don't know who these other two are. Maybe Black Canary and somebody else. And it looks like it's like a maybe it's a crossover between Justice League and Justice Society. I'm not sure, um, but you know, just a cool cover. So that's why I snagged it. Speaking of cool covers, got the Solo X Mutants featuring Aaron, number one. Uh, pretty provocative good girl cover. So I snagged that one for fifty cents. And then uh, Ron Lim actually does. There we go. Ron Lim and Tim Dizon. So Ron Lim does the the pencils on the interior, so I was happy to find that. He did a lot of work on these on these early X Mutant stuff. So anytime I can find those that are in pretty good condition with uh, good covers or Ron Lim doing the interiors, I'll pick those up. Uh, uh, Rob Liefeld actually did one of the early covers or one of his early works was one of these uh, X Mutants. I think it was number five. I'm not sure. You can definitely tell that it's Liefeld when you come across it. Um, I haven't found a decent copy of that yet, um, unfortunately, but I always keep my eyes peeled for that. Uh, speaking of Ron Lim, we've got Captain America 372. This was the first part of this uh, Streets of Poison story arc from Captain America in the early 90s. So this was the Streets of Poison story arc was the basically the first story arc that I collected um, in comics that I can remember, you know, it's when I first got into comics, I don't really remember buying a whole lot, or don't really remember specifically what I bought, other than, you know, that early image stuff, and, um, the Batman and Superman stuff, but this, I clearly remember going to Great Escape and finding a few of these Streets of Poison issues in the back issue pens, and they all have this Streets of Poison trade dress on it, so I was like, oh, it must be something, uh, all related, obviously, and, you know, it kind of scared me off collecting Captain America because this is issue 372. So, you know, what the hell's going on in the previous 371 issues? But um, since I had the Streets of Poison logo there at the top, I figured I could jump in here and uh, read 
the the whole story and you know kind of figure out what was going on just kind of a way to be introduced to the the character so um this was the last one i needed i think this goes from 372 to 378 or 379 it's like seven or eight issues that's you know quintessential 90s story about street drugs being like you know flooded on the streets and uh, captain america trying to save the day from the, the evil drug dealers so it's pretty funny but again, just really cool Ron Lim art on the cover, and he did the interiors as well, so I happy to find this. So um, now that I have this one complete, I'll probably give it another read and see how uh, ridiculous it is. <laughs> All right, speaking of those 90s Batman stuff, this is Detective Comics 664. This is Nightfall Part 12. I think this is the issue right after... Yeah, this is the one right after... Uh, Batman what was it 497 where uh, he breaks or Bane ba- Bane breaks Batman's back and that is a freaking tongue twister. Uh, so there's the first first page. It's a cool uh, splash page of Bane just tossing Batman down onto the streets of Gotham. Everybody freaking out. Uh, even the baby up there oh, crying a little bit. Poor little fat baby. <laughs> so this one's cool. Um, just needed this for the nightfall run. Uh, pretty close to finishing it off now. Um, one or two more, I think. Um, I'm actually going to pick up the uh, novel. There's a novelization that I think Denny O'Neill wrote of Nightfall that I'm going to pick up. It's at one of the flea markets that I go to a lot. Uh, they have a paperback version of that, um, of the novel. So I'm going to grab that once I have all the... Uh, the single comics picked up and give it a read because it's just a you know cool story from my childhood and it hopefully it holds up all right so last couple of 50 cent books we've got a little mini run on alpha flight here these are all jim lee covers he did uh four of these he did 87 through 90 uh, just uh, he did the covers on these he, jim lee did he didn't do the interior art unfortunately uh, this little arc was written by Fabian Nicieza, I think is how you pronounce his name. He's one of the co-creators of Deadpool, him and uh, Liefeld. Um, Michael Blair, Michael Bear did the pencils on the interior of all these. I don't know who that is, but just really cool Jim Lee cover there. Got Wolverine in the background. Uh, that was 87. This is 88. It's another one. I thought this one was funny because it's got this uh, insert of the Wolverine what issue is that like 27 or something they used that art in the wolverine uh, nintendo video game as well so it's i just thought it was fun that they used it here on the the cover of this alpha flight issue you know uh, obviously wolverine was he's still one of the most popular characters in marvel and definitely was back in the 90s so anytime they use it to promote uh crossovers i just thought it was funny and i guess he's he's canadian too so um he spent some time with alpha flight here and uh, we got Forge right there, so it's a pretty cool cover. Uh, I got 89. I got Guardian on here. And Puck. And Wolverine just standing there smoking a cigar. I don't know if that would fly now. They probably cut that off, but whatever. Just really cool cover. Guardian. Uh, looks That's a cool pose for Guardian. I don't really know anything about him or the rest of Alpha Flight, really, um, other than Jim Lee started his Marvel art with them I think it was like 51 or 53 it's his first interior art and then he did some of those covers in those early 50s as well and then obviously this little run towards the late 80s and early 90s issues and time period haha <laughs> and this is number 90 uh, we got another Wolverine this is I don't know looks like the Lady Guardian maybe I don't know but she looks like Spider-Man crossed with spawn a little bit holding a fencing sword um <laughs> got the cape and the the red and the big eyes uh, but you know just another cool uh, jim lee cover a kind of bookends a little bit with 87 it looks like so you got wolverine in the background there in the shadow and then a guardian back there too so interesting uh it had been a while since I'd seen these, so, you know, 50 cents can't beat some good classic Jim Lee art. And then this is the last 50 cent book, which I did not know existed. 
The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. This is number four. They actually did a four-issue miniseries for uh, the Ford Fairlane adaptation. Uh, if you don't know what this is, you should probably go watch this movie immediately because it is terrible. It's uh, Andrew Dice Clay, who was, you know, 90s stand-up comedian. He did the, uh, the Mother Goose nursery rhymes, the uh, adult versions of them. You know, and as a 10, 11 year old kid growing up in that time, that was like the height of comedy. So easy to memorize, and they were filled with uh, bad words. So, you know, take those to the bus stop and have everybody cracking up or say them under your breath in school and, you know, get everybody laughing and get the teacher uh, distracted so she wouldn't be able to do her job. So I had always enjoyed that. Uh, and this was a nice little, looks like a Star Wars kind of homage, maybe cross with Conan the Barbarian, and I'm not sure he's holding his uh, guitar here with a, like a lightsaber or like a, a sword ready to beat off the, uh, the encroaching crowd here, uh, beat off. Uh, <laughs> so, and then that's Mr. Dice Clay there on the cover uh, in his real form, and then that's his comic form, obviously. I didn't know this existed, but I'm definitely going to pick all these up if I ever see one through three. As the, uh, the movie, I only saw it when I was a kid, and even as a kid, I knew it was pretty bad. So um, you should go check it out. If, get through the first five minutes at least if you can. If not, uh, I understand. So that will do it for the 50 cent books. The rest of these were a dollar a piece. You got, well, there's one $10 book. So, all right, so this first one is. X Force and Young Blood was a crossover. Um, sometime in the '90s, I grabbed it because it's got uh, Stephen Platt. He did the cover. I think he did the interiors as well. So I was happy to find that for a buck. And let's see. Next, we got Backlash Number One. This was uh, kind of a spinoff of a Stormwatch character. I just picked this up because I really like uh, Brett Booth. He did the cover and the pencils. Basically, on this whole series, I mean, it ran up to, like, issue 40 or something, I think. So, um, these are all cheap, obviously. A buck a piece might even be too much for them. These are everywhere. Um, but I found this one. It was in good shape, still in the bag and board. So I picked it up. Most of the time, these are not going to be in bags and boards. Uh, that's why I haven't been picking them up, because they're all beat to crap. Um, but I'll probably start picking them up here and there when I find them in, in good shape, just because... I like the uh, I like the artist, and um, I don't really remember the character too much. I remember him um, kind of being an anti-hero, I think, with him and Grifter. They had their own series called Kindred uh, that lasted a while. Uh, those have some really cool covers. Brett Booth did those as well. Lots of uh, bright colors and cool 90s art that I like. Um, so I'll start picking those up. Next, we've got Cobra Kai number three. This is, uh, it was only from a couple years ago when the, uh, the show came out, which is awesome. Can't wait. New season starts next week, right around, uh, New Year's. So that's going to be awesome. Season four. Um, I picked up a retailer incentive of this a couple months ago, um, and this is the B cover. Uh, it's just a photo cover of Johnny Lawrence, my spirit animal. So, uh, I was happy to find this one for a dollar. Uh, I'm not sure what the cover, I guess the cover A's probably have <clears throat> original art. <clears throat> excuse me and the cover B's are photo so uh, I will definitely pick all these up anytime I see them alright next we got Profit this is volume 2 number 5 again Stephen Platt did the cover I don't think he did the uh, pencils on the interiors but he definitely did the cover is this a wrap around? yeah it's a wrap around this is funny you can see it's kind of got like um, there's Captain America's shield there's Hulk in the window, there's Wolverine in the window, and I'm not, uh, yeah, Mr. Fantastic, what's up? Um, I'm not sure what's going on in the story of this, but uh, that might even be Rhino. Those are the guys from Youngblood, it looks like. Uh, that's Prophet, there's a puppy dog, and I think that's about it. But yeah, once I get this full run, I definitely need to check that out, check out the interiors and read it and see what's going on. I just thought that was really funny with, you know, Wolverine. Hulk, Mr. Fantastic, and Cap's shield uh, on the on the back cover there. That's probably how they got away with it um, without pissing off Marvel. But you know, gotta love that. <laughs> All right, last book here. I paid ten dollars for this one. So this is you know way over what I usually pay for a book. 
but it's just a really cool uh, Street Fighter. This is Street Fighter Unlimited, and this is number seven. This is the one in ten retailer incentive. So I picked this one up uh, just for ratio for ten bucks. Um, Peter Renna on Renavision, one of the um, the CBSI Tales from the Flipside guys, he did a video on these uh, Street Fighter Unlimited homages a couple weeks ago. That was really cool. Um, so that's how I that was brought to my attention. Um, he did, uh, well this is cover of, or an homage to Wildcats 1, I should have pulled that out to compare, but it's a really cool homage to Wildcats 1, you know, it's something obviously you don't see very, very often, you see tons of Wildcats 1s in those back issue bins, but nobody really homages it very much, uh, but this guy did, he's even got the, uh, what's his name, Uvo, or Levo, after Jim Lee, right there, so that was cool. And then we got uh, Ryu on the cover. There were Spartan was Vega, Chun Li. So that's Dan, Cami, Guile, Zangief in the background, and Dalsum. So just really cool. These Street Fighter homages to comic to to previous comic books are really cool. So I was glad that Pete did the video on them. Um, so I'm definitely on the hunt for these. I think there were. 10 or 12 issues of the Street Fighter Unlimited run and an annual, and each one has a 1 in 10 retailer incentive that has a different homage to a, a comic, so uh, be on the lookout for those, I'll put a link to Pete's video in the description of this one, just so you can check it out it's definitely worth a watch if you like Street Fighter and uh, Pete's got great videos so he does a lot of Star Wars stuff too so just check out his channel and uh, enjoy. So that was my haul, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'm recording this a few days before Christmas, so uh, I don't think I'll do another video until Christmas, till after Christmas. So just hope you guys all have a Merry Christmas, and I will talk to you soon. See ya.